Welcome to the last part of how create chain animation with Autodesk Maya tutorial. Okay, now let's begin. Now we have to connect the chain links and joints. For that, I go back to the front view. Okay, now watch carefully. I first select the chain link and hold down the shift button, then select the joint and release the shift button. Now I press the P button on the keyboard to connect the chain link to the joint. Now I select the joint again. Then you can see how the chain part is selected along with the joint. It means my chain link is connected to the joint. Now I am doing the same process for all the other joints. Now you can see how I connected all my chain links to their respective joints. Now I am going to create the chain animation. For that I go to the outliner first. Now I click on the small plus sign in front of joint 1. Then I can see all the joints in it and the chain links connected to those joints. I double click on the NURBS curve and rename it. Next, I click the small box in front of the Create IK Spline Handle tool under the skeleton and go to its settings. Select the Reset tool to reset all the settings in the settings box. Next, uncheck the Auto Create Curve and Snap Curve to Root tabs under it and close the settings box. Then you can see how our mouse icon changed to an arrowhead and a small box. It means that the tool is now active. Now go to the outliner and select the first joint and press the control button without releasing it, select the last joint. And next select the NURB circle and release the control button. Now your chain is created. Now select your NURB circle and go to rotate mode and rotate it. Then you will see how your chain will spin beautifully. Then place the two sprockets that connect the chain in the way you want. Select my NURB circle and go to the channel box on the right and select Rotate Z there. Next, bring the mouse to the viewport, press the control button and the mouse wheel button and drag without releasing. Then you will see how the Rotate Z axis of the chain rotates. Now I set my rotate Z value to 0 and lock all other values immutably. Now I return the rotate Z value to 0. Now I'm going to try to spin my chain when one of my sprockets spins. For that, I have to connect the value of rotate Z of the sprocket and the value of rotate Z of my chain. To do that, I go to the Connection Editor under General Editors in Windows. Now there is a box like a table, divided into two. On one side it says Reload Left and Outputs, and on the other side it says Reload Right and Inputs. Ok, now if I want to rotate the chain with this sprocket, I have to put the details of the sprocket on the Reload Left or Output side, and the details of the chain on the Reload Right or Input side. Now I click on the small plus sign in front of Rotate under Reload Left and select Rotate Z under it. Next, do the same for the other side. Now you can see how my chain rotates when I rotate my spocket. Now I change the Rotate Z value of the spocket to zero again and connect this spocket with the other spocket. It does the same as before.
Before animating, right-click on the animation slider and go to the playback speed and see if real-time is active. Now I select the main spocket and right-click on Rotate Z there and give key selected. Now go forward a few key frames and rotate the main spocket as much as you want. and give another keyframe. Now go to the time slider and select two keyframes while holding down the shift button and the left mouse button. Next go to graph editor under animation editor in Windows. Now while holding down the left mouse button, select those two keyframes and click the right mouse button and give the linear under tangents. Then you can see how the curve line is flat. Now again select those two keyframes and select the cycle under the post infinity in the curves. Now you can watch the last chain animation. Okay then thank you very much for watching my video and don't forget to subscribe me. I hope to meet you again in this kind of video. God bless you.